What's up, everybody? Welcome to Project Church, whether you're here online, whether you're here in person, and uh, we got some great stuff planned for you. This is the 11 o'clock. Uh, 9 o'clock was fire. So cool to be worshiping with you. So if you're tuning in right now, you are in for a treat. There's great worship, great community, and great word that's ha- that's coming up. Um, but we're here. My name's Lauren. My name's Carly. And hey, my name's Sam, and we, we are, are the youth pastors. pastors here. <laughs> and uh, I think we should implement this. We are live yes. from the Riverfront, yes. Sacramento. Here at Blueprint Coffee. We're, li- we're live at Blueprint Coffee right <laughs> yes. now. Yep. And uh, if you haven't been to Blueprint, it's a little plug. Get here. They're yes. open Thursday through Monday. They open at 7 a.m. They Sunday. close at 3. Yeah. Sorry. Working hours. Okay, yeah. Thursday Th- through Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What'd I say? You said Thursday through Monday. Oh. They are closed so, Monday. They are closed Monday. Yeah, yeah. No. But Where they are guys? open right now, and yes. their coffee it's is the best delicious. it's ever been today. Is it the best? It's the best. But it tomorrow, best. I hear, is going to be even better than today's coffee. No. I hear it just keeps getting better every day. Oh. Yes, but we're closed tomorrow. But we're closed tomorrow. <laughs> He's working on what it's going to be yeah. for, oh, oh, Thursday, so. for Thursday. For Thursday. Yeah, there we go. Okay, okay. Okay, we're very, very clear on the times. But uh, let's talk. So some of you all are just getting to church. Some of you are tuning in. You're uh, getting your cup of coffee at home. Maybe you're like getting your kids set up with their kids lesson. If you didn't know that, we got projectchurch.com slash kids. Uh, There's lessons there where you can have your kids get into the word of God and uh, and see what's happening for their kids. A lot of great stuff. Uh, But Sam, what do you got for us? I know you have. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do a lightning round, I think, just to make sure we cover the full landscape of Thanksgiving. By the way. Happy Thanksgiving to all y'all out there Happy watching right now. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. We want to wish you that Happy Thanksgiving before it comes. And yeah. then after that, yes. we got Christmas coming. Hey, after that, yeah, a good Friday. couple months coming up. Ready. And then 2021, just like hey. that. Just like that. Hey. It's crazy. It's car- it really is crazy. All right. It's Question happening. number one this is for everybody out there. Jog your memory. Maybe type it in the chat below. For you guys, okay. what is the one thing, five seconds, you are most thankful for? Go. My wife. My husband, Boom. easy. Hey, that's me. Oh, man, yeah. we, that was like half a second and half a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, because I got another one. Okay. Favorite Thanksgiving food item. Go, you get 10 seconds. Mashed potatoes. Green oh. bean casserole. Oh, Ooh. green bean casserole. Okay, all right. It's easy. Tired. All right, now but here's don't look at me like that. a little bit more challenging. <laughs> Least favorite <Ooh>. Thanksgiving dish. <laughs> Stuffing. What? Stuffing not is... my favorite. Yes. I'll eat it. But not yeah, my yeah. favorite. Name something bad. I like it all. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm not for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, okay. I guess it'd be, I don't love them. I, no, it's not my first I love choice. You. So maybe that's the yeah, Because I can't think potato. of something I don't really like. Sweet potato casserole or yam okay. sandwich. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. So, oh, the, yeah. Because I'm like, what is the actual difference? Maybe if you know, <laughs> okay, comment this, below. This what is the difference between a sweet potato and a yam? Do you know? I, I don't. Oh, I do I not. Know. It's a color. They have different colors. I'm pretty but sure there is a like, scientific All right. Here's one more question. Correct answer. One more. Well, a few more. Let's go a few more. I just got cued okay. that we have two more minutes. Okay. Uh, do you chop your tree down before Ooh. Thanksgiving, on <laughs> Thanksgiving, or after Thanksgiving? Uh, no. <laughs> because I do not chop down a tree. Oh. I bought my Christmas tree, and this okay. is just a pro tip. This is free. This is gonna bless somebody. <laughs> tip, you down. buy your Christmas tree if you want to. I, I, if you if you don't if you want to go, you know, save the forest yeah. and from forest fires because that yeah. that is a problem. Only and you I, can only you prevent, prevent forest, forest fires. fires. <laughs> or or you could like make an investment. Yeah. But here's the deal: after Christmas, if you don't have a Christmas tree, like a uh, a fake one which we do don't judge me Judging. but buy it after christmas true. legit it's 80 true. percent oh, off yeah. like true. after that's we true. went to hobby lobby bought an 80 dollar tree that's normally 400 dollars. like i ain't paying 400 bucks for a tree Heck no i ain't a baller so we do some quick math but what's 80 percent off of 400 like seven years and we paid 80 bucks for it, nice. and it is, well i did have to fix the lights on it this year <laughs> that's okay which was 80 very trying yeah yeah so okay. all right for me that was my i took like a per- <laughs> fraction of the time on the other two questions and i went over my time that's okay yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so Sam and I have this argument every single year. Uh-oh. I say, I say celebrate Christmas after Thanksgiving, but most, re- but Sam's argument is celebrate Christmas in September. So I mean, September, no. October, I don't know. He celebrates year, really, really November. early. But okay. for me, I most recently since we've been married for, married for four years, okay. I've been recently been like, okay, we can celebrate Christmas Compromise. sooner. Compromise. But, but normally, I okay. say after. Okay, Thanksgiving. we're done with that question. Okay, we both I never last. answered the actual question. I guess I just answered <laughs> it, but right. but we we put it up like two days ago, Friday. We put oh, it up. Friday. Yeah, before. so it was before Especially Thanksgiving. Especially in 2020. Yeah, 2020 is different. Okay, 
Last question. I'm so nervous. Last question. If, if you could give for Christmas. My two front teeth. Oh. <laughs> Can I somebody sing the song, Two Turtle Doves? No, uh -huh. gosh. And a partridge in a pear tree. Three yeah. something. Okay. Three. Three. French just kidding. Kids, two turtle we were doves. just warming up two our vocal cords because we're getting ready to <laughs> worship right now. No, uh, just I, I didn't have one. the last I didn't question. Have a question. question. But hey, no, at not. this time, I'm going to pass hey, it over to Lauren, yeah. and Lauren's going to pass it over to our worship team. Pass it to me, pass it to the worship team. Let's, let's get go, ready let's for, go. for God's presence. Let's go after it. We're not just worship. We're not just watching a screen. If you're online, let's engage in worship. Prepare your heart. If, yeah. you're, here on, if you're here in person, let's go after Make let's the go. most of this opportunity. We're about to encounter God's presence. Let's worship let's with all we have. Let's do yes. this. this morning to King Jesus.
church, can we sing a new song this morning? Thank you, Pastor Caleb. Can we sing a new song this morning, church? <laughs> song's called Egypt. And has anyone ever seen the animated film Prince of Egypt? You already know what this song's about then. I won't sing the bridge yet because I don't want to mess it up or, or reveal too much because it's a fun bridge and it sounds really different. But I will read it. And the bridge says, you stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. You marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. And the chorus goes like this. Cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. See that chorus with me? You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's sing this together. The wonder of how you brought deliverance in the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters of my release. Oh, Yahweh. Come on, sing this. You're the God who fights for me, Lord.
this place. Hey, that's a song entitled Faithful to the End. Because we serve a faithful God. And I just want to illustrate that for you from Scripture just to remind us just how faithful God is. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 Corinthians 1, 9 says, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, and He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 2 Timothy 2, 13 says, If we are faithless, He remains faithful, for He cannot disown himself. Hebrews 10 23 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. How many believe we serve a faithful God in this place? Listen, I want to pray over us, over our faithfulness, because how many of you know God is always faithful, but sometimes we lose faith. Even when we're walking on the water like Peter, Peter was in the midst of walking on water and he lost faith. And I think we've seen miracles in our lives. I know you've seen miracles in your journey of faith. And yet even in the midst of miracles, even in the midst of God's faithfulness, we can lose faith in moments. And so I just want to pray over us that we would encounter God in a way that says, God, help me, remind me to be faithful. Remind me to be faith-filled. And that doesn't mean you won't be human. You will have moments of doubt. But I believe God wants to infuse His people today in this place with a greater level of faith than you've ever had. In a moment of despair and discouragement in this world, God wants to fill you with faith. So you can walk faithful even when everyone else around you is fearful. So come on, let me pray. Lord, I pray right now for faith to rise in this place for faith to rise online. The people listening right now, God, there's a lot to be fearful about in this world, in this moment. And yet you are calling your people to be faith-filled, not fearful. You are calling your people to be faithful, not swayed by the things of this world. So Lord, we declare today how faithful you are, and we ask that you would let the faith in us rise so we can walk faithful in our walk with a faithful God. Lord, we love you, and I sense and I believe that there's people whose faith has been hanging on by a thread. And today, that faith is going to be filled. Their faith tank is going to be full to overflowing, God. So fill our faith tank in this place right now. We want to walk faithful, God, in all things. And we thank you that you're a faithful God. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give him one, one more shout of praise in this place. He's a faithful God. And he's building and rising faith in this room. So hey, we want to thank you guys for your faithfulness in giving. Right now, I just want to encourage you. How many know worship isn't just singing? Romans 12, 1 tells us that let your life be a spiritual act of worship. Everything you do, how you live is worship. And another way we worship is with our giving. And so I want to encourage you that you would be faithful in giving. I don't always have a faithfulness issue. I often just have a forgetfulness issue. I forget to give. I want to give, but I forget. And so this is your friendly reminder. In fact, some of you are old school and you still give checks and cash. We're my old school people in the house. Come on. You, you, want the, you want to give tangibly. Well, we're not passing buckets in this COVID season. However, we just installed something in the room brand new. You guys ready for this? There is a receptacle. Isn't that a great word? There is a receptacle attached to the wall in the back. It's a metal white box. And if you would like to give physically on your way out, you can drop it in the box. I know most of you give online. Thank you guys. The Church Center app, make sure you get it. That's the easiest way to register for services. Also the easiest way to give. Um, so jump on that. But you can give by texting. Give As you can see on the screen behind me, you can give by going to our website. But man, I just want to thank you guys for being faithful in your giving. God helped us complete this project because of your faithfulness. God is continuing to sustain this church because of your faithfulness. So give it up for yourselves real quick that you've been a faithful church. Thank you guys. We love you. We love you so much. So let's spread some love in this room. We can't touch each other. 
We can't get much closer to each other. So turn to three people and give them an air five as you're seated this morning. Air five, what's up? You can be seated. What's up? What's up, Project Church? How's everybody doing today? Good morning. Hey, there we go. Is it still morning? Yeah, I guess it is. Still there. The 11 o'clock. We're almost there. But hey, I want to let you guys know this morning, you look good. At least everybody in the first two to three rows that I can see, these lights are blinding me. I'm like a rotisserie chicken up here just cooking. But uh, hey, we want to say thanks for coming this morning. Uh, every week, I think for the last two to three weeks, we've had like 10, 15, 20 new people coming. And uh, I'm not going to make you raise your hand if you're new today, but can we please give it up for the new attendees in here? We always say welcome home. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the family. And if it is your first time, we want to ask you just to text the word new to church to 97,000. Um, and with that, when you leave these doors, take a hard left. Um, we've got a, a box, a cool orange box for you that has some goodies in it. And you can tell them what you can do with that. Yeah. So if you're a VIP this morning, it's your first time to Project Church, we have a couple gifts we want you to go home with. We have a mug, a Project Church mug that you can take home with you. And if you take that gift box, to the coffee shop. Give it up for our new coffee shop. Just opened up a week and a half ago. Let's All go. right. Blueprint Coffee Project. If you take that box to the to the coffee shop, you could order yourself a free drink. So a mug and a free drink. Yeah, yeah. VIP. Take advantage of that. Good deal. Hey, uh, first of all, before I say what I'm about to say, happy Thanksgiving. If we don't get an opportunity to tell you that, um, coming up on Thursday. I know it looks a lot different this year, but we want you to enjoy that with your families and relax and make some memories. Uh, but with that being said, Christmas is on the way as well. We got a cool thing they'll throw on the screen here um, called the Christmas Pajama Jam. Say that three times fast. Don't Christmas do that. Christmas Pajama Jam Party. Christmas Pajama Christmas Jam Party. Christmas Pajama Jam Party. Christmas Pajama Jam Party. <laughs> Problem. Savage Randy. And all we ask you to do, and this is a cool opportunity for all the parents out there that we've been saying, if you need a date night, uh, maybe you just want to, you want to go do some Christmas shopping early right now. Um, you drop your kids off, but before you do that, go to projectchurch.com slash kids. You'll see that in there you can register. Now listen, if you've got a child and you're on the edge, sign up because the, the spots are going quickly. People want to do this. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do in this season in Sacramento. So go on there. It's $5 per child. And then, hey, I think they're like watching a movie. They're, they're going to yeah, show up in the best night. dress pajamas. Yeah. They got a little bit of everything. So sign your kids up. Go out. Get a date night. It's practically free. Yeah, so you really. want to do that. That's a deal. If you're a parent, take advantage of that for sure. Also, we want to uh, tell you about our Christmas project we're doing. It's called Project Christmas Child this year. We are partnering with an organization right here in downtown Sacramento, and it's called Mercy Housing. Now, Mercy Housing is transitional housing for uh, a lot of people are coming right off the street. Families with children, though. It's a special program for families with children. So we're providing gifts to 120 families in the Mercy Housing Project this Christmas, and you can help us with that. All you have to do is invest $20. So they, they want you to purchase a $20 gift. So starting next Sunday, we'll have a list for you to take that will instruct you as to what to buy, uh, what gender and such an age group to buy a gift for and some gift ideas for you. But we need you to bring those back in two weeks. On December the 13th, we need you to have those gifts returned here. So you're going to drop them off here at Project Church, and we'll distribute them to Mercy Housing, and I'm sure we'll have video footage and such oh, yeah. when we do that to 120 families this Christmas. Yeah, that's a, it's a cool opportunity because you guys know every year. I mean, a lot of churches do it. We've been doing it, but it's the uh, the just the box, the red and green box. And you, we put stuff in there and we send those off. And while that's still a huge need, not to discredit that, but you guys look outside these windows and you walk the streets and you see that there are families and there are people that need it. And uh, we keep saying that the local church is the hope of the world. And we don't want to just invest in a building. Like, this is important. But there are families out there during this Christmas season that we really want to bless. So can I challenge you? I know it's above and beyond. But maybe think about what you would want as a child if your family was struggling. Or maybe you have kids and, like, what it would feel like not to have that opportunity. Uh, we get to fill a huge need in Sacramento. So um, I know there's going to be heart cards um, next week that you can fill out or bring back the box. But uh Hey, thanks again for coming this morning. And in just a moment, Pastor Chrissy's going to come out here. And I heard the 9 o'clock. It was fire. So I'm just going to tell you right now, prepare yourself, fasten your seatbelts, 
is going down this morning. Uh, but in a moment when she comes out here, let's give her um, just some honor this morning. Let's give God some praise and expectation for what he's going to do. Amen? All right, here we go. Praise, not Chrissy praise. Let's give God praise this morning. <laughs> humble. I'm so humble. Okay, just kidding. Why did I say that? Good morning, Project Church. How's everybody doing? You ready for the word of God, the teaching of the word, the preaching of the word? Listen, if you have missed any of the um, messages in the last few weeks, you could always jump on projectchurch.com and take a look at them, watch them, listen to them, um, because I don't want you to miss a verse of Mark. There is so much that we wish we could dive into on a Sunday morning, but we're just giving like 30 minutes for like a few verses. But there could be hours spent in, in really digging into the Word of God. So we just encourage you to look up um, the old messages, get in the Word, read this on your own. Also jump into a community group. We jump into the Word even deeper than on Sunday morning. And this is a way for you to grow in your relationship with other people, but also grow in your understanding of the Word. But yeah, check it out, projectchurch.com. Caleb spoke a great message last week on servant leadership. Who was here for that? Yes, it was excellent. It was a wonderful message. And um, I wanted to bring that up because uh, the message that I'm going to talk about and the person that I'm going to talk about is in a very different position than the people that Caleb was talking about last week. So Jesus is in the final um, moments of his ministry just before he's entering into the final days of his life, really, here on earth. And he's really, we're coming to a point in scripture where he's about to perform his final miracle. And just before he performs his final miracle, he has a run-in with two of his disciples and their mom. Somebody say, um, mama's boys. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure that we remember that's what hap what's happening here. Um, so the story before G that Caleb talked about yesterday was that James and John, disciples of Jesus and their mother, was really inquiring of Jesus on how they can be exalted and brought and elevated to be seated at the right hand uh, and right and left hand of the Father. And what's so interesting is that it's not just James and John, it's the mother. And I think it's so interesting because, don't get me wrong, I'm a mom. I want my kids to be the absolute best at everything they do. In fact, I want them to win all the time. In fact, we have a slogan in our house that, who are we? They say Coles. And what do we do? And they say we win because we want to win, okay? We 100% want to win. In fact, but we have delineated what a winner actually is. A winner is someone who tries their best, has a good attitude, and never gives up. So don't, don't get all crazy like, oh, my God, they're so arrogant. No. Um, <laughs> But here's the thing. What was so interesting is that Jesus says, what would you want me to do for you? And they say, put us at the right and left hand of the Father. And then we come to chapter 10, verses 46, and we come upon a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. And he says to the blind man, Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And he wants his sight to be recovered. And, you know, I think it's an interesting juxtaposition between the disciples and then Bartimaeus. And these two inquiries give us a blueprint for how we should navigate dark times. It gives us a blueprint for how we should navigate when we're depressed, when we're full of anxiety, when we're irritated, when we're mad, when we're frustrated, when we're having a hard time. When we are walking through 2020, we understand how we should do it based off of the blind beggar Bartimaeus. Here's what I want to submit to you, that sometimes when we're walking in darkness, when we're in the middle of difficulties, and perhaps when we're concerned about our position, you know, let me, let me just say this. <laughs> COVID has been hard. COVID 2020 has been difficult. 
But what I'm seeing and what I'm perceiving is that everyone is so obsessed with their position on everything. Their position on mass or no mass, church or no church. You know, there's some people who are so woke, woke, that they are more Republican or more liberal or more left or more right than they've ever been in their life. They're so convinced of the position that they have on something. And I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't think that God's interest is on what our position is than what our perspective is. And, and here's the thing. What we see is that there's disciples, there's some mature Christians who've been walking with Jesus day after day, month after month, and they are interested in position while this blind beggar who is desperate and has nothing is concerned about getting perspective. I think we can learn something about this. And, you know, it's not even about the positions of political positions. It's also about our position like, oh, my goodness, I have nothing. I, I, I have nothing. My financial position is in despair. And we're concerned about our position. Oh, man, I don't know if I have the role I want with my boss. I don't know if I have that, that um, you know, I want that next, that, that, that promotion. And I need that that position so desperately. I need people's understanding and perspective of me and the position I have on social media and the amount of followers I have. Like, this is more important to you than what God's perspective is. And I think we need to get out of the position predicament and get interested in the perspective of our Savior. The greatest miracle for some of our most desperate times of need is less about position and more about perspective. Bartimaeus just wanted to see. He just wanted to see. He just wanted perspective. He just wanted to see his Savior. He just wanted to know and see Jesus, the one he knew who would rescue him. Can we get more concerned about the perspective of Jesus? Can we set our minds on things above and not on earthly positions? For we have died and your life is now hidden in Christ. Let's stop trying to have all these positions and just be hidden in Christ and understand and see through his eyes, see through his perspective. Jesus and his disciples in this next few verses and passages that I read, they give us an encouragement that is the same encouragement that I think that we need today. Take heart. Get up. He is calling you. Somebody say, get up. Get up. Your perspective is keeping you in the position that you're in. If your perspective doesn't change and you don't get up, your perspective will not change. My perspective here is going to be the same if I'm just here all day. See? See, nothing's changing. I can't see the back row. But when I say, I set my mind on things above, my perspective is different. Get up. Somebody should have gotten up and said, amen, and they have to wave the hanky at me. Okay, all right, that's good. All right, so take heart is the encouragement that the disciples gave. Get up. He is calling you. He is calling you. You are not going to know your calling until you get up. Some of you are restricted to what you've been doing because you have not gotten up. Take heart. Jesus will help you see. Take heart. Jesus will give you perspective. Take heart. It's less about position and more about perspective. Take heart. Jesus has a miracle waiting for you on the other side of the right perspective. So let's jump into Mark 10, 46 through 52 and hear about the blind beggar Bartimaeus. And they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, throwing off his his cloak. He sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we've been on this journey through Mark so that we can know you more. God, the purpose of these Sundays is to know you more, to find life and freedom in you. So may your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. 
and we, may we follow it all the days of our lives. God, may we be transformed in this room. May we not leave here the same. May we be changed by the presence of God. May be, we be changed by the word of your, from, straight from your mouth. God, may we be changed and may others see your light because of what change you've done in our lives. We love you and we commit this time to you in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So this miracle of sight and perspective for Bartimaeus happens, I believe, because Bartimaeus was a guy with some heart. He was a guy with some heart. You know, sometimes we think that the underdogs are the people who have heart. But you know that every single person who sits in this room has, who has accepted Jesus into their life has victory on their side. So I, I don't want us to walk into this message thinking that, oh, I'm the underdog, the enemy is, has me under his foot, and I need to take heart. No, you are a victor, not a victim. You are a victor. You have victory. The end goal is victory because the goal has already been achieved by Jesus. Jesus says, take heart, for I have overcome the world. You can take heart today. We are going to receive this message, not as the underdog, but as the victor. And we're going to receive this with abundance and overflow and understanding that God is wanting to till, still, even in the abundance of living for him, to take heart. Can we take heart? Take heart. What happens when we take heart? Number one, first we become bold. Somebody say bold. Bold. Verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, you have to understand that in this day, when somebody was sick or had some kind of ailment or an obvious, um, you know, handicap, that the religious people, listen to this, the religious people of the day would say, oh man, what did they do to get that blind eye? What sin did they commit? And you know, if they didn't commit a sin, then what did their parents do to cause them to be the way that they are? Read about, we read about this in John 9, 1 through 2, um, where they're talking about another blind man. The, the, the disciples say, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Can this just be a warning, church? That we don't know why people have the ailments that they have. We don't know why people are in the state or in the state of mind that they are in. So let's stop being the religious people of Jesus' day and bringing it into modern day and calling it discernment. Because I'm, I'm tired of people not understanding or accepting or receiving the love of God because we've been too religious. Listen, you know that this blind beggar understood himself to be less than what he actually was. I mean, he's, you know, he's not just saying, Jesus, heal me. He's saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. And oftentimes the word mercy is more about forgive me. So all these people have labeled him a sinner or his parents a sinner. And he's had all these stigmas, had all these labels on him. And what, 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 what he thinks about himself is that he's, he's, he's not good enough. So he's like, oh, Jesus, please have mercy on me. No, we, that, that's not what, what Jesus is saying to him or wanting him to know of himself. You know, mercy is about having compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone who it is within one's power to punish or harm. Perhaps this man was expectant of a miracle, but maybe because of what people have told him of himself, he didn't even know how to ask it. Do you know what I'm saying? And so I want us to just be encouraged to get bold. He didn't have to take responsibility for sin or the sin of others, but what did he do? He took responsibility that, I think that he thought he should have taken. And I think we can learn from the blind beggar, even though he, didn't, he wasn't really in the wrong, that we need to start taking responsibility for our own sins. Because, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, we don't understand why people have the ailments and they're in the state of mind that they are in, and we don't know why, you know, I mean, come on. Sometimes you're like, oh, why is their bank account? Why is the bank account empty? Probably haven't been faithfully tithing, you know? Or it's like, oh, um, oh, why did, why did that relationship end? Probably because they were unpure. 
You know, like, it's like we, we do all these things. We say all these things, and we don't really know that. And so I want us to recognize that there are moments, however, where some of our bad choices have led to really bad consequences in our lives. So when that is the case, then we need to take responsibility, and being bold is being honest and being vulnerable and recognizing that we need God's help. So when we're going to be bold, we need to make sure that we're taking responsibility for what we can take responsibility for. But also what I think is awesome is that the blind beggar isn't waiting for him to be positioned right next to Jesus in order to call out to him or cry out to him. He, 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 wasn't, he was taking responsibility, but he also wasn't waiting for the perfect circumstance. Some of us are waiting for the perfect circumstance before we call out, and we don't understand that that is the opposite of being bold. That's being controlled. That's being controlling. And we need to just cry out to God. Are you bold enough to believe that the messages that you've been hearing week after week, month after month, can really change your life? Because I, I'll be honest, one of the most disheartening things that we see as a team, as a, a leadership team, is sometimes when we see people hearing a message, encountering the presence of God, falling on their face, crying before him, and then they walk out of here the same. And listen, it's not even, it's not even just the leaders. It's because we know God's heart is that you would not stay the same. He wants so badly for you to change and be closer to him and to understand him and to walk in freedom and to walk in life. But sometimes we get in the presence and we are left unchanged. So I want you to be encouraged to get bold, take some responsibility, but also don't wait for the perfect circumstance. It's not going to be the perfect circumstance for the lights to be like, like shading you and they won't see you up praying with people. That's never going to happen. Sometimes some lights are going to be on. So you can get bold and pray with people who are coming down at the altar who are willing and ready to pray for you. So we need to become bold. Let's become bold. Second, what happens when we take heart? We get desperate. Verse 48, and many rebuked him, telling him to be silent, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. So I was thinking about a time that I recently became desperate, and I think a lot of the moms in the room can understand. Um, you know, when my kids are acting a fool and kind of acting crazy at home, it's cool. Figure it out. I'm just like, figure it out. You got to get it together, blah, blah, blah. But when we're in public, I get desperate. And then I just go, <laughs> oh, yay, we're fine, we're fine. I'm just like sweating. My armpits are sweating, and I'm like perspiring. Firing and I'm just like, just get it together, get it together. Love you, honey, honey, stop yelling. No, 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 no. Ooh. And then I'm like, ouch, mom. I'm like, no, 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 everything's fine. And you get desperate when things are in public. Am I right? Come on. Did Canaan say ow? Ah, oh, yes, he did, but Jesus forgives me. <laughs> I mean, come on, don't take it too far. He's fine. It was just a little, you know. But sometimes we get more desperate when things are seen in public because we're like trying to save face, because we're trying to just keep it together, because we're trying to control everything. We get desperate because we're trying to control everything. Have you ever thought that maybe sometimes God wants us to get in a place of desperation so he, think, he brings things out into the light? I am thankful that there are times where I've been challenged because things are brought out into the light. Sometimes God puts us in positions when there is no hiding our blindness. There was no hiding Bartimaeus' blindness. But whether he got there because somebody sinned or not, I believe that that blindness brought him to his miracle. It brought him to his miracle. And some of the things that we are hiding in this room are being kept in hiding because you're not ready to receive the miracle that God has for you. God wants to do something in your life, but we need to bring it out of hiding. You know, blind Bartimaeus, all he had was his blindness to work with. And no one has anything to work with. God doesn't have anything to work with if we're just like holding on to the struggle. He wants you to get desperate. We've got to get desperate. When we get desperate, Sometimes we get to the point 
where we're either going to choose him or we're not. We're either going to choose him or not, because now it's out in public. <laughs> I mean, blind Bartimaeus, he was, everybody was ridiculing him, telling him to shut up, and he could have just like shied away, but I think that actually propelled him to say, yes, I am blind. I have this cloak on. Save me. Help me see again. Church, can we be a desperate church that's not trying to hide everything and control things and do things on our own? Let's be a desperate church. Next, taking heart looks like we recognize our call. Verse 49 through 50, and Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up. Someone say, get up. He is calling you and throwing off his cloak, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. First of all, I want you to recognize that in this passage, Jesus was calling the blind man. He was calling the blind man, but he told the disciples to call the blind man. Some of us need to recognize that, yes, God is calling you, but he's going to use community to call you. You cannot do this thing of community and church on your own. Listen, some of us are trying to do the journey of walking with Jesus on our own, and you're just not going to be able to do it. I love that, you know, Jesus said, call him, and then the the, the disciples so generously extrapolated, call him, to take heart, get up, he is calling you. And I believe that there have been people in my life that have been placed in my life that had extrapolated the call of God on my life. I think about this week, I kind of had a hard week, don't need to go into details, um, but if you follow me on Instagram, Chrissy D. Cole, <laughs> um, I wrote about it. You know, sometimes you just have those super long like super duper long captions and it's like it's a caption isn't that supposed to be like 33 words or less no I wrote seven paragraphs so you can read about it more there but I had a hard week um Caleb was Caleb was out of town and I, I had a moment where I was just like man I if I keep this in then I am not going to make it through this week did I want to like kind of hide it and not let people see it and people that I felt like should be following me should they see me in this this point of a little bit of frustration and a little bit of discouragement. When, when Canaan was struggling with an asthma bit, he had an issue this week. Like, am I going to just like be like, no, I got it. I got it handled. Kale's out of town. I got this. I'm a woman. Hear me roar. You know, whatever. I don't, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> is that what women do? Okay, sorry. Um, but Jesus reminded me that he's placed so many people in my community around me to help me through these moments. He helped me with this, this community that was able to pray for me. And you know what I realized, and this is something that I want you to recognize in your life. I want you to stop and think about the people that need you in your life. I named people in my life. I was thinking about my kids. Caleb desperately needs me. Um, <laughs> the church, different friends, family, all, different people who need me. And then I realized if that group of people is disproportionate to the amount of people that actually fuel me, then it's going to be rough. I'm not going to make it. But if the amount of people that fuel me are in proportion to the amount of people that need me, then I'm going to make it. That's what God gives us with community. And so I just want you to be careful. If you are alone, if you're suffering on your own, and if you're having a hard time on your own, and you don't have community who's helping you pull you out of that rut, pull you out of that hole, pull you out of that pit, if you don't have that community, then it's, it's gonna, there's going to be like a slow destruction internally, and before you know it, externally, it'll manifest itself. And we don't want that to happen to anybody. But let's take care of it internally. Let's have people around us. Community is our heart here. If the heart of the church is not strong, then I don't, I don't think that we would be doing, we would be doing most things in vain, and we're just doing things for the external. But if our heart is not healthy, if our heart is not healthy, we're not living out the call that God has on our lives. God's call for your life before really anything else is the, the, the body of Christ, is to be called to the family of God. So surround yourself with community. So we see that Jesus has called us. We recognize our call when we take heart. We recognize that Jesus called um, blind Bartimaeus 
through his disciples, through community. And then verse 50, this is my favorite part, and you probably were thinking it as I came to it. If not, you're about to get it. And throwing off his cloak, and throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. He sprang up and came to Jesus when he threw off his cloak. What is your cloak? Is it the dreams that Caleb preached about a few weeks ago with the jackets? Is it those dreams, those, those old dreams that God's just saying, throw those old dreams out the door. I have something better for you. Throw those old identities out the door. I have something different for you. I have a new identity I want to give you. Throw out all those labels that people are putting on you. I have another label, and it is chosen, called by God, son and daughter of the most high God. This is the cloak that Jesus is telling us to proverbially throw off. Throw it off so that you can receive and come to Jesus. So much of us have been walking around with a cloak of shame, with a cloak of guilt, with a cloak of remorse, and he's saying, no longer come to me. No longer come to me. Some of you have let your guilt and condemnation kept keeping you from Jesus, and he's just saying, throw it off, come to me. Naked as all can be, just come to Jesus exactly as you are. Come just as you are. The cloak let people know that blind Bartimaeus was a blind beggar. That identified blind people as blind and as beggars. No longer will you let the things of this world label you or cloak you with what is incorrect. Let's walk in freedom. Let's walk in love. Let's walk in the cloak and the call that God has for us. Next. Next, what happens when we take heart? We receive a miracle. Thank God we receive a miracle. Like I was waiting for you to get here because some of you are waiting for a miracle and God has something for you. Verse 51, it says, and Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. Can we just settle something here right now? Because this is really at baseline. This is really foundational to what we need to understand about this message. That this is the very heart that God has for us. What do you want me to do for you? Do you know how much God loves you? Do you know how much he wants to just pour out his blessing on you? I mean, I think that we've been shielding him with all these cloaks that we've been wearing, and he's just saying, take that off, give me your hands, and let me just pour out on you and receive all that I have for you. And again, it's not the promise of a husband. It's not the promise of a full bank account. It's not the promise of position. It's the promise of perspective. That's the greatest miracle that needs to take place here right now. And for us to recognize in our human nature that we are called by God and that we are loved by him is the revelation that every single person needs in this room that gives, gives us the baseline for moving forward. We need to receive a miracle. Settle it in your heart that God wants to do and work a miracle in your life. That's what he wants to do. We need to receive the miracle. And then we move on to verse 52. And for my final point, what happens when we take heart? We share in our miracle. Did you know that in other scriptures and other versions of this scripture, we see that Bartimaeus is not alone. Bartimaeus is actually um, with another blind beggar that Jesus also heals. And then in Luke, in the passage, in um, this account in Luke 18.43, it says, And all the people, when they saw the miracle, and all the people, when they saw the miracle, gave praise to God. This miracle, please don't pigeon it whole to a position that you need to be out of or in. Recognize that you need a miracle for perspective. And when we receive the right miracle, we can't boast in ourselves. We boast in God and what he does, and that brings God glory. But when we're concerned about our own position, concerned about what our own desires are, and concerned for things going the way that we want them to go, and the way we think that things should go, then when we're concerned about that so much, and position, and not perspective, then we shortchange the people who need to see the miracle of God taking place in our lives. Can we get to a place where we can humbly receive a miracle of perspective? 
and then share in our miracle because there are desperate people in 2020. There are desperate people, despairing people, people without hope, people who are depressed, people who are full of anxiety, people who are hopeless that need to know that God wants to do a miracle in their lives. You know, at our Sisters Night, it's a women's event that we have three times a year, and then once a year we have fashion, which is a Sisters Night on steroids. Um, this past week, or a couple weeks ago, we had three ladies sit up here and they were talking about how God had changed their lives. Alex talked about how God had taken her out of this depression and anxiety and a life full of sin into his marvelous life. He, she was changed. And then there was Becky who she, man, she had walked through a really hard religious religion and very different. I mean, I can go into details. It's just too much, but despairing, they, de full of despair in her family, and her marriage, and then God did a miracle. And then there was Melissa. She just walked through, newly becoming a widow, and then she, God, God gave her a different perspective. Can I tell you that those ladies, they weren't, considered, they weren't concerned about their position on stage and platform. They were concerned that you and the women of this church would hear the perspective that God wants to change your life and God's gonna do it in my life, then he's gonna do it in your life as well. He wants to change you. So receive a miracle today. Receive the miracle of perspective and share that miracle with others. But there's other things besides perspective that I know that we're all looking for. There's some real requests that you might have. There's some real miracles that you're searching God for. There's some financial miracles that you're looking for. There's some relational miracles that you're looking for. There's some there's some 2020 miracles that you're looking for. No, whatever it is, God wants to do that in your life. You, he wants you to just cry out to him. He wants you to get desperate for him. He, he wants you to cry out to him, call to him, and recognize you have a call. And then he's going to give you the miracle so that you can walk out that call. So I don't know what miracle it is that you're looking for today, but I, I just feel inclined that we would all bow our heads and close our eyes and that we would have our hands out ready to receive. What is the miracle? If you, if you want to do that, you can lift your hands up even right now. What miracle is it that you want to receive? Who have you been praying for that you want to know Jesus, that you want them to be changed by the love of God? Who is it that is waiting and hoping to adopt a child and you're waiting for that, the, the, the green light in that? What is the miracle of provision that you've been looking for? What is the miracle of, of, of healing that you've been desperate for? What is the miracle of, of perspective that you're needing in a situation that just keeps on getting you jammed up in your job and that keeps on having you and your spouse beat heads and butt heads about what is the miracle god i pray that right now you would pour out miracles right now as they begin to go ahead just ask him for the miracles that you want in his life speak it out right now get desperate for god who cares who's listening to you who cares who hears the miracle that you need if you need a job in here just say jesus i need a job go ahead utter whatever words that you need you need provision utter those words right now he wants to do a miracle in your life god we're getting desperate for you some people are getting bold. Few people are whispering. Some people are getting louder. But what do we need from God? God, we need a move of you. God, we need unity. God, we need your fresh outpouring of a spirit. God, we need you. We need provision. We need help. We need help. We're desperate for you. We're nothing without you. We are poor in spirit without you. We need encouragement in the room. There are some who are lonely. There are some, some who are desperate. God, who feel like Nothing is going to change. So God, we need revelation of hope. We need ministry to take place right now in this room. God, pour out your blessing on them. Come on, trust him right now. God, I believe that you're, you're making miracles happening even if we cannot see it. You're making a miracle happen. We trust you for it right now. Thank you, Jesus. But church, one of the greatest miracles that you can receive is the gift of salvation. It's the gift of salvation. Only Jesus can change you from the inside out. And if you've been sitting here listening to this message and you're wondering, man, I want to be changed by him. I want new life. I want, I want my heart to change. I want my situation to change. But let me tell you right now, nothing's going to change without the love of God transforming your world. Make him Lord of your life. Accepting him into your life is saying that, God, I submit everything to you. I trust you for everything. I trust that you're going to take control of my life and that you're going to do big and better and greater than I could ever think, imagine, or dream of.
So God, we trust you for salvation in this room. If that's you in this room and you want salvation and you want to accept Jesus into your life, you want to say that you are the Lord of my life. If that's you in this room, I've got to count to three. And I'm counting to three just because I know this is your moment. You're thinking about it. It's a big decision. It's the most important decision that you can make in your life. But if you are wanting to have Jesus come into your life to change you from the inside out, if that's you in this room, on the count of three, would you raise your hand? One, two, three. Is that you in this room? I see that hand. I see those hands. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody in this room, would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing me here today to hear your voice, to hear from your word. I accept you into my life. I accept that I need you. I believe that you love me. I believe that you can change me from the inside out. I confess my sins and I confess my need. So I receive you in my life today. The miracle of Jesus in my heart right now. Give me the strength to live for you all the days of my life. I love you, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen, amen. Come on, can we give it up for those who gave their life to Jesus? Would you stand in this room? We're gonna sing one more song. And if you are hoping or believing for a miracle, there's some prayer partners who are up here who are ready to pray for you. Get bold, get desperate, and watch God clarify the call on your life and also perform the miracle that you've been waiting for. And we're gonna sing this song talking about the faithfulness of God, amen? Come on, sing with us. There was in a day that you Lord by my side. There was in a day that you let me fall. In all of my life, your love has been true. In all of message what a great sunday uh, man so much energy in there but also yeah. Yeah. Uh, i think it was such a timely message and you know i felt like that was one that really was uh not a gut check but one that was kind of a heart check no, just to, check to make sure yeah, like man both. even in 2020 like 
are we being bold? Are we being transparent? Are we yeah. really coming to God with what we need? Being and uh, what's such an encouraging yeah. message? What did you guys get for it, Lauren? What, did, what, was, what, what spoke to you the most? So I love the, the <laughs> perspective or like how she Ooh, put it in perspective yeah, yeah. on Ooh. perspective or position. That She's like, great. are we going to desire... <laughs> Uh, like elevating our position or changing our perspective. Or are we, people. Are we wanting God to change yeah. our perspective yeah. or elevate our position? I'm like, oh man, like yeah. that's so our priority. Like people, yeah. we do want, like it's kind of yeah. innate, like we do want to just kind of move up the ranks. Yeah. Um, but you know, a few weeks ago, it's like Jesus, we talked, preached on that verse, first shall be last, last verse. Yeah. And, but then now we look at this guy, blind Bartimaeus and he was just saying no I just want to see yeah and just how she hit on that like that perspective of running to Jesus yeah. to say I just want to see like, yeah. God that's yeah. what yeah. I want I want to see and yes. obviously he was blind but but paralleling that to see God I want to see what you see yeah, yeah. that's and good through that so that, that was my big takeaway yeah for sure. yeah I think for my takeaway for this week was recognize your call how do you get off the old you take off your clothes and you get yeah. up and run to Ooh, just be desperate for good. Jesus I just good. loved her illustration of that I just think it was so powerful and encouraging like Sam said a gut check a heart check all the things I was yeah, you said you, it wasn't thing, a gut man. check but it was a heart what's <laughs> the difference between a gut check sorry I just I have to Gut, I, I'm gut minds check. Wondering. Remember when Chrissy was preaching? She said, "You know, it grieves our team that when people come, they hear the messages and they leave, okay. but they don't change." That's, I think for me, that's kind of like a gut check. Like, oh that's yeah, that hurt, check. but nothing happens. But when a heart check happens, oh, like, so it's man, another level. Man, like I can't say. I get it. Okay. Okay. But My eyes so you said it was now. that good. It was. It wasn't just a gut check. It was a heart check. It was a heart check. But I think <laughs> I agree. I agree with what my wife said yeah, yeah. when she yeah. said throw off the cloak. Yeah. Man, I think that was something that we all need to hear, especially going into a new year. Yeah. Yeah. Man, if we're gonna take heart, we're gonna have to throw off all the expectations. Yeah. And, man, maybe fear, like man, it's gonna happen again. Yep. That's that's yeah. been a big one. I think I've talked to a lot of people about yeah. this year, not to go super deep, but. You know, somebody who's get you get disappointed doing one thing, and you're like, man, it's gonna happen again. And I think that's right. a cloak that we gotta throw off too. Yeah, like, that's good. Just wow. take heart, man. What so God powerful. has for us next is even better than what we have yeah. right now. So yeah. what a great message, man. Yeah. So good. So I could see this. I know it's Thanksgiving week, and some of our community groups might take this week off. Um, I know mine's meeting Tuesday morning. Hey. We're gonna be talking about this too. But this idea of like, okay, what cloak do you need to take off? What's what's God telling you to just throw that that He's not called you to wear? Like Ooh. He didn't tell you to wear that cloak. You need to take that off. Yeah, that's good. Because that's a perspective that's limiting that's you. So good. Um, so I know uh, there's gonna be community groups having that discussion this week. So if you're not part of community, because she talked about that, yeah, you know, the community thing. She getting was community. That. So practical takeaway. Yeah. Right now, right where you're at, you pull out your yep, phone. Yeah, there you go. You open. What do you open? What do you get? Church, Church Center. Center. You, you get the Church Center app and lo- find a group that works for you. Find hey, a group. Hey, maybe hey, it's online. Hey. Maybe it's on Zoom. There's some that are yeah. meeting here. There's actually one, like, uh, early morning, a men's one that meets right. Thursday morning right. and gets Blueprint. What? Um, so that is an option for the dudes. So. Um, but there's so many so many different groups that are happening. All are life-giving community. Yeah. yeah. So make sure you do that. Also on the app. Yes. Also on the app, register for church next Sunday. We like, want to sing with right you. Now. We right want now. to meet you. We want you to join us for church next yep. Sunday. Register right now for next Don't Sunday, the a 9 VIP and 11. We yes, we VIP treatment. Yeah, so if, you're, if you're new, if, if you like, new. they're watching and they've never been yes. here. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and this we is our do. promise to you. I see some VIPs back there getting that hey. treatment right you now. You literally yes. cannot come to Project your yeah. first time and sit and in not, a chair and not. leave without being told hi, yeah. hello, getting met, getting yeah. that community yeah. that we're talking about. You can try to go undercover, but we will catch you. We will say good morning. We're about to get, get the cops called on us. But hey, we love you guys. We want to say thanks for joining us. Share this feed on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. however you want to do yep. it. Uh, yep. But from all of us at Project Church, happy Thanksgiving. happy Thanksgiving. We love you guys, and we'll see you next Sunday.